Mississippi Outdoors Radio continues on Super Talk Mississippi. Adam Butler, uh, uh, still some stuff going on that we need to make sure everybody knows about. Yeah, we um, we're, we're going to get into some fish stuff here in a second. Snakeheads. We're going to talk about snakeheads. But I uh, do, do want to let the listeners know that uh, the agency will be having a fish pond management workshop via Facebook Live later this week, uh, June the 27th at noon. So um, I think it was back in May we had several weeks of uh, f- uh, pond management stuff that we covered. So if that sort of wet your appetite for more, uh, check this out. You could do it over your lunch hour or whatever. Go to the Facebook Live. I don't... I don't know, Dennis, do you know who is actually going to be doing that? Larry Bull or, or one of those guys? Anyway, um, should be should be a good event. Check that out on the Facebook. And then uh, also wanted to just make an announcement. It's getting that time of the year. Um, we're getting pretty close to fawning season. Probably already have fawns on the ground in parts of the state. Leave them alone. Don't pick them up. You know, every year we get calls at the office, uh, people finding a lost fawn and thinking – you know, thinking the mother's abandoned it, and, and no, 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 that's not the case. The mom is off doing her thing, and she has left the, the fawn alone on purpose, and will come back to it. So if you see one by itself, just leave it. Mama's coming back. Yeah, if anybody's listening, and you, you see this little poor distressed fawn out there, know that 99.9% of the time, the mother is not far away. We right. we get those calls a lot yep. in July and August yep. a lot. So it'll be I found this deer it's abandoned. The next couple of weeks, I brought so. it home with me. Well, oh, no. What'd you do that for? Well, because it was abandoned and it didn't have anybody taking care of it. Well, it is illegal to have that in your possession. First off, second off, the mom's probably heartbroken now and crying her eyes out. And so, you know, think of what you're doing to the to the family dynamic. Seriously, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're you're messing things up all the way around. So just let them be. Leave them in the just, tall grass. Just just go look, look, look at yeah. the the, and, the pretty and little fawn. Not to mention the fawn when they come out, they they don't have any scent. They don't. That's a way for the predators not to be able to track track their little selves laying there in the weeds. And then we as humans try to step in and make everything a okay, and we put all our um, scent and cologne and all that stuff on them, and then you know put them back where they were and just like come on man so what i'm hearing is uh sometimes humans can be stupid Mm, yeah sometimes some people more than others you know it's just well it's it's good in dna i guess it's good intentions but you know nature's gonna handle itself yeah yeah well we know which road is paved with good intentions (laughs) <laughs> well we do i mean that's, that's that that's an old cliche for a reason so yeah just leave them be it's a, it's a great piece of advice uh-huh. uh you know that that's enough about baby deer let's talk about something more interesting snakeheads right. snakeheads dennis is over here uh dennis ricky fisheries biologist let's just start off with the basic question what in the heck is a snakehead a uh, snakehead is a is a non-native fish that that looks like our bowfin or grenel or in Louisiana, it's called shoe pick. So it's a long fish, and it's got um, you know long top fin, dorsal fin, and the um, the snakehead has a long bottom fin on it. But it really looks a lot like a bow fin. Now, there are a lot of stories told about snakeheads. They they, they as the stories keep getting told, they turn into Godzilla just about. You know, they they can come in your house, they can hotwire your car, they'll steal your baby, everything. Uh, let's put some of that uh, to to rest. But the first question is: You said they're non-native. How did we wind up with these? Well, I think we we got them in two ways: as an aquarium fish, uh, people you know had them in their aquariums, and then they they released them, and also because um, I mean they're good to eat. So um, they were imported into the United States as a, as a food fish, too. And, and they may have been released from live uh, food fish markets to establish local populations. So, um, and they're from Asia, Indonesia, China, Korea, um, India. So people in those, those countries have a history of, of eating them, you know. I wonder what they taste like. Yeah, that's a good and how question. How do you prepare them? Like, yeah, we've just gone off. Yeah, this could be a whole tangent yeah, here. I've had them fried and then like you've fish tasted? cakes and fish you've balls. Eaten a snakehead? Yeah, yeah. I went to a, a symposium about a year ago, and it's actually pretty good. 
Come yeah, on. It's pretty good. Did, did, pretty did good you like f- and catch up? F- like fillets, like catfish, or are you doing the little? No, it was no? smaller pieces rolled in, you know, with bacon and, and things like that, and little fish cakes and little fish bites. It's pretty good. Put, I mean, you put bacon on anything. Yeah, I bet. Right. You be you all put right. bacon on a lot of bacon, ball. a yeah. little bit of snakehead, yeah. and some but, ketchup. You know, but to get to to your your original point about you know Frank and fish, that's what they were called, and they were going to take over, and they were going to crawl on land, and they're going to attack you, and and you know bite through steel toe boots and all this. They do have an impressive set of teeth, okay, but they're kind of. They're kind of shy, and if you go out to sample for them in the daytime, you have a hard time, and you have to go out at, at night. So, um, they're like a vampire fish. So they can, they, they, you know, they have a highly vascularized uh, mouth, and so they can breathe air, they can gulp air, and they can live in 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 waters with low oxygen, you know, concentrations. They can wiggle around on land with their with their fins and in the spines and their fins, but they can't go long distances so um there was a lot of inf- misinformation out there when they, when they first started uh, but but i can of. understand that because if i'm walking along the side of my pond and it's nighttime and this fish with these enormous teeth is slithering towards me yeah i'm gonna have a story to tell and it's probably going to be a little exaggerated by the time i get around to telling it yes yeah. now, now dennis why why don't why do we not like these things what's what's the problem with snakeheads they sound like they're good to eat. <clears throat> well, well. The, the main reason is, you know, they're non-native. And and so you don't know uh, with any non-native species if it's going to become invasive or not. Right. And invasive means it's causing economic or ecological harm or harm to human health. Okay, right. So we, we don't know with a lot of these things. Some have done risk assessments before they get here. Um with the snakehead, um, it really hasn't become invasive anywhere it's been found. And in the United States, it's been found um, in a pond in uh, Connecticut, I think it was, and um, they were eradicated or killed out from there. But then they were found in the Potomac River system, still persisting there, and then and found in, in Arkansas in 2008. And the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission tried to eradicate them in that water basin. Uh, and they killed a lot of them in the water basin. Unfortunately, they were in another adjacent water basin, too. So, um, But the good news for them, if there's any good news, is that they're non-invasive. And they're, while they're competing with native species for food and for you know living space, um, they haven't seemed to displace any native species or uh have severe impacts on native species. Do they have any predators around here? Anything that can take on those teeth? Well, I, I think that you know our, our efficient uh, sport fish predators, like largemouth bass and crappie, and uh, you know walleye, uh, sauger, things that get big, would eat them when they're small. Yeah, but when they get you know bigger, a couple pounds in size, well, really nothing's going to eat them. Maybe an alligator, you know. Maybe some some big gar if they're they're stealth predator and they can you know sneak up on them. Well, yeah. and that that was the one that was going through my mind. This sounds like it's got some similarities to a gar. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and and so we found them in Mississippi now. Um, last week we just got our report of the fifth one, a juvenile uh, in Desoto Lake, but they've been in. Um, Lake Whittington and in that area, Gunnison, you know, right around in there. And they're coming from the Mississippi River and they're being, you know, uh, displaced by flooding. They usually spread during flooding from Arkansas, where they were in Arkansas. So um, I think we're going to see see more of them in, in, in different locations along the Mississippi River and in Oxbow um, Lakes. Um so what should, what should you do if you catch one? Well, we, we don't want you to throw it back in the water, and we don't want you to throw it, release it on land, um, and you should just keep it in your ice chest and, you know, let it die, and then call us, and we'll, you know, we'll get it, we'll collect it, we'll put it in our museum, or we'll report it to the—there's a national database that tracks all these things where they occur. 
Adam really wants me to ask you if it's okay to fry it before we call you if we catch one. I don't have any problem with that. Okay, okay. With bacon. Yeah. With, yeah, the bacon Fry is an important bacon. part, yeah. <laughs> we Now we're getting questions on the text line. How do you catch one? What bait do you use? It just went nonstop. Why do they call them the Frankenfish? Well, because of the hype that was involved in, you know, the big teeth and the ability to breathe air and, and to wiggle around on land. It was just, you know, all those factors. It was just a, a super fish. Well, there's only nightmare. been like less than 10 documented in the States. Is that right? Or am I completely wrong on that? Uh, no. Just Mississippi, no, you're, you mean? Just Mississippi. We just last week got the report of the fifth one. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean they're, they're not more out there and in other water bodies, but this is documentation. How about this? Steam snakehead filet with oyster sauce. Okay. The snakehead, I mean, when it says filet, that thing can't be any more than like two ounces of meat, right? I mean, they're not that big. They're not like a catfish. No, I mean, they get to decent size. Um, the pictures I've seen of them are, you know, little bitty tight, like a hot dog. Yeah, but... Uh, probably the consistency uh, probably, of a hot dog. Probably, uh, you know, two to three pounds is what we've seen so far. I'm not sure what their maximum size is. I'd have to look it up. But, uh, you know, just think of a big bowfin. Think of four, four or five pound, so nine pound bowfin. So we got five fish documented in the state, Yeah, and you're trying to... Figure out how to cook them, but deep fried. You don't have head enough to make a mess. You don't have enough to make a mess of fish. <laughs> All I know for sure is if you're watching at Super Talk TV, uh, Dennis's face makes it perfectly clear he was not prepared for this line of conversation. <laughs> That's right. He did not walk in the he room with his recipe book. The, the Google better. says the record snakehead four feet long, eighteen point three seven pounds. Hmm. From where? Make a lot of poker from where? Japan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All the other side of the world. That's a big po' boy. A, I mean, they can't swim though. I guess. Let's let's move along to the silver carp. What about the silver carp? Adam, okay. Adam just wants to distract everyone so he can go back to looking up recipes. So the jumping fish. Yeah, you know, the jumping fish. Yeah. What are silver carp? Well, there's a there's a big big fish. It looks like and uh, a big minnow. And uh, with eyes uh, set low down on the, the sides of the head, and it's a filter feeding fish. It swims through the water and with its mouth open, and it it feeds upon phytoplankton, and which is single cell plants, and zooplankton, which is small animals. So you usually need a microscope to see, and and can include up to larval fish too. And and so these are the fish that if you motor around in the delta. Or perhaps in the, in the Pearl River, and uh, and you're going along, and you're cruising along, and you're trying to get to your favorite fishing spot, and all of a sudden something erupts out of the water and jumps out, and looks like a small little torpedo, and becomes airborne and flips around, and may jump in your boat, and may hit you, and may break your fishing rod, you know. Uh, so there is a danger there to to boaters and skiers of being hit with these these fish. Um, why do they jump out of the water? Uh, we think they're startled by um, the boat engine noise. It's only like at a certain RPM, though, right, yeah. Dennis? Yeah. I mean, when you're on full full plane, or it's it's about when you're coming out, or you're slowing down, and you get to that I don't know, fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred RPMs. It's like they just erupt everywhere. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a certain RPM. Now, um, and and unlike the snakehead, which we only have a handful of documented, th- these are pretty common in a couple of waterways right well they're they're common now throughout the yazoo river basin uh mainly in the mississippi river basin uh we found them recently in the pearl river basin uh even in bay st louis uh the jordan river on the coast and uh just recently in the tennessee tom bigby waterway coming down from the the Tennessee River Basin through the Ten Tom Waterway down into Pickwick and Bay, the Canal and Bay Springs. So they're a bit easier to find. Yes. Yeah, yeah. they're more widespread. And and flooding helps them spread around. You know, they're going to swim wherever they can swim during floodwaters, and 
that's how they they got into lots of um, oxbow lakes in the delta and and it comes up all the time because it's so common we'll just go ahead and answer a question that someone may be thinking that you cannot it is illegal to shoot them or shoot at them with a firearm on a on a body of water I should not be surprised that you even have to say that, but yeah. no, we get it. We get yeah. it. We get the question asked every year if they can, you know, shoot at them with shotguns and stuff, jumping behind the boat. And the answer is no. It's no. And not only so, the legality, but isn't that that's firearm one hundred and one? When you take hunter's ed, you don't shoot across a body yeah. of water. That's yeah. inherently not safe. Yeah, not that's to, that's dangerous. It's a bunch of bad um, stuff that could possibly right. happen from that. Holy and they cow. see some of the stuff on TV, you know, not shooting with shotguns, but shooting with bow and arrows and stuff like that. And so people well, see it on TV. It just so we've we've encouraged the harvest of um, you know all species of Asian carp, and silver carp, bighead carp, black carp, grass carp by commercial fishermen. Um, we changed the the law and the rule on that. Um, and we are trying to match up commercial fishermen. There is a processing plant in Mississippi that is taking Asian carp and heading them and gutting them and freezing them and shipping them overseas for food. Because the, the, the silver carp is one of the top ten cultured species in the world. Hmm. And really? so it is from, it's from Asia. And um, Asian uh, cultures have a history of eating it and growing it. Um, and um, so there is there's a market for them. It's just not uh, Americans don't have a history of eating them yet, but they're good to eat too. I've heard so, that. I have heard that. Do I need to Google some recipes? I've mm-hmm. heard that they have a white flaky meat, and um, I've heard people say they're yeah pretty pretty fair to eat. I've not tasted neither the snakehead or the Asian carp, so. I'm proud of that today. Now, I, I don't know. She seems to think it is. My wife was born and raised in Grand Isle. She's listening to the show. She texted in talking about the snakeheads and said, Cajuns have been eating these for as long as I can remember. We call them, and I'm going to mess this up because it's a Cajun word, Shopik? Shoepick. Shoepick. Yeah, she's talking about bowfin or grenel, what we would call bowfin. Yeah. Um, they look alike. They, they look alike. But not but, quite the same thing. No, because bowfin, we have bowfin. That's a native species. Now, uh, of course, I, I'm pretty sure that was just an excuse to then send me the flyer to the uh, shoe pick rodeo and white bean cook off in Homa in two weeks. There you There'll go. be some good food. Come at. on. So yeah, I, I've there got the details. If you need me there. to text this yeah. to you, we can. Especially you, Adam, because I think Adam is slowly starving to death over here. So. <laughs> Uh, every bit of information we can give him will help, I think. Uh, what what can people do about the uh, the silver carp as far as spreading them or not spreading them? Well, definitely, as with um, any non-native, uh, the department doesn't want you to spread them around. So um, don't move them from one water body to the next. Um, one of the things that we're really concerned about is, so they're in the Yazoo River Basin and they're in the Pearl River Basin, and the young can be found in, um, and, and the adults too, but if you throw in a cast net below the reservoirs and you catch a bunch of bait fish, um, silver carp um, particularly look almost identical to gizzard shad and threadfin shad. So people catch shad for bait, and then they take them to other water bodies and they use them. So we made a regulation that you can't transport bait caught in spillways, live bait caught in spillways. You have to put it in a uh, dry container or on ice immediately. So don't spread bait around. Makes sense to me. 